this smoking on your platform or smoking out on your platform? Yeah, sure. It's showtime. All right, we live. We're live, Tristan. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? <laughs> Well, first things first, everyone, thank y'all for tuning in, everybody who is already here. I'll be trying to start on time because I'll be respecting people's time and everything. So while we are beginning, everybody, if you want to go ahead and share this live, because I know that you probably have friends and family members who have questions about the uh, amazing movie that was recently uh, dropped on Tubi, but has been out for a while. And that's If I Can't, we are here with Mr. Tristan Fazekas. Yeah. So y'all, y'all go ahead, get the numbers up. Y'all share this live, y'all tune in. Make sure you send your reminders over to whoever you need to send it over to so that they know that it's time to come in here and start talking to Scott, I mean, Tristan. <laughs> Go ahead over to the comment section. We got some folks that want to say hi to you. Miss Erica said, hey. Hi, Erica. Hey, and then <laughs> we we got uh Raina. She said hey. Hey, Raina. <laughs> She's an ICU member too. So shout out to ICU reading and social network, y'all. This is a book club that brought this to y'all. Just just want you to know that throughout this live, I'm gonna be advocating for literacy. I just, I just need y'all to know that. So, uh huh. Read a book. <laughs> we got some more folks coming in saying hi. Now this person right here, let me, let me show. I gotta highlight her. Octavia Tanika Grant mm -hmm. is the whole reason why we got you here. She okay. was the person who came and was like, now listen here. She's an author and she writes characters about as crazy as Scott asked. Okay. We called her the task. She hits the line like, now nah, y'all didn't call me up. I know y'all about to call him up because what is we doing? That's and right. so the wheels started spinning and then boom, here we are. How you doing, Miss Icta? <laughs> Glad you noticed the I don't know, genius in this project. Uh, it's catching like wildfire, and I appreciate you. And then we have another person who is highly responsible for you being here, Miss Stephanie Fazekas. Emphasis on Fazekas because I mean, mm hmm, that's your sister. <laughs> You better show her some love. <laughs> she done told us you went to a book club. So I, I'm in the book club. That's what that's what she said. She said you went to a book club. Oh, bye. I, 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 if I join. What I, you want? I see you. You want I see you now? Is that what it is? I apologize. You even forgot about your book club. Yeah, because I've been so busy, I haven't had even had a chance to read. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? You've been working. You've been doing a lot of good work for the people. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you a pass on that. So um, let's see who else we got in here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> wow, y'all be coming with some interesting questions already. We just got here. What? <laughs> so that kind of actually leads me into what I want to say next to you all. So, you know... I know it's a lot of different groups and stuff like that, and they're dedicated to Tubi and the movies and all that good stuff, and they do things a certain type of way over there, okay? Over here, though, we keep it real, we keep it real cute. We keep it real respectful, you know what I mean? So if you feel like that's not something you want to be able to do, I completely and totally wholeheartedly understand if you got to tap out. Okay, but I just want to establish that y'all gonna have to keep it respectful this way. Okay, <sighs> all right. Um, I also want to make sure that you guys know we will be spoiling. We will be talking about the movie. We're gonna be talking about details. We're gonna be asking all kind of questions. He said that we can ask him anything. Now that don't mean that he's gonna answer all of it, but ask 
you know what I'm saying? And just, you'll see. He might answer it for you, okay? And then also, we all we want to make sure that we are respectful of the topics that are going to come up as it pertains to the movie. Um, because this live is probably going to get a little lighthearted. It can be funny. We're going to key key. We at no point want to put the impression that domestic violence or abuse or anything like that is a matter that should not be taken seriously. Okay. So part of the conversation could be triggering and that's because part of the movie was triggering. So if you feel like mm, this might not be, you know, the place for you to be because somebody might say something that will upset you again, completely and totally understand if you got to tap out of this one. So we just want to get that out there before we start diving into our conversation with Tristan, the actor, the the director, the man who has coined lowercase, lowercase words to the people. Um, Tristan, thank you again for being here with us. Most definitely. I'm thankful to be back. This is our this is our first time on ICU, I believe, but this is our second interview. It is. It is. It is our second interview. And I remember we talked about another movie that you were in. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it was a uh, narc. Okay. And it had one of my favorite like lines in it. Uh -huh. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, booty dope. Booty dope. <laughs> Why do I say booty dope just randomly, just out of nowhere sometimes? I'm pretty sure people think I'm crazy. Because I'd be like, booty dope. <laughs> it, don't, it don't have no rhythm or rhyme to nothing. I just be wanting to say it because it rolls off of my tongue so well. And then you got to provide context of why you saying booty dope so much so people don't think you crazy. <laughs> I don't <laughs> really. <laughs> booty dope. You know what? I think I have a clip from that movie. Like, let me check and see, because I might have it. Mm, hold the line. That's a booty dope on you, son? It's a fucking booty dope. It's when you hide crack in your crack. <laughs> Did y'all hear it? Y'all heard it. I don't think we could hear it, but Tristan, did you hear it? No, I didn't hear it. I don't think uh I don't think we can, but they might have heard it. But uh just in case you didn't, we gotta give some context to the booty dope. So please explain the booty dope. Well, what it, it derived from a situation from back in my past where uh I was in the street and I got caught up in a raid and mm. I was fresh and that was one of the questions like y'all ain't got no guns on you like we i got booty dope and we pretty much had the same response as the uh as the actor which is my son in the movie like what the fuck is booty dope <laughs> and the same shit was like well see when well, you had dope in your ass you know what i'm saying uh, when you had crack in yeah. your crack y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay yeah so that's where that came from Oh, oh my goodness. Like, yep, that's probably one of my favorites. I yell that out just randomly. It's it's just one of those things. Okay, y'all heard it. I'm so glad because it's so funny. Y'all got to watch that movie. The movie was really good. He was great in that movie too. So y'all make sure y'all check that out. So we're going to talk about you, Tristan, because I think people need to understand that you are not Scott. Yeah. So we want to make sure that people get comfortable with knowing who Tristan is. So tell us about how you got started acting. Um, years ago that uh, I got called Big Meech. Um, this is before Instagram or anything like that was uh, really popping. Maybe about 2004, 2005. Really didn't even know who Big Meech was until time caught up. And then I, he was in the magazines and all that stuff. And I got to finally got to see who he was. Then he went and started doing this time, and time progressed. And my, maybe about 2011, 2010, I said that if they were ever to come up with something um, about his life, that I would try to portray him. And 
2016, 50 Cent announced that he had the rights to BMF. And so I made myself a viable actor. I went and hired, my, uh, hired a, a acting coach and started um, making myself a part of the acting community here in Detroit. And things just started flowing for me and, you know, the rest is history. That is awesome. That's awesome. So since you started acting, like what year was that and how many movies or TV shows would you say that you've been in? Um, that was around the end of 2016 and the beginning of, thousand, beginning of 2017. I uh, started uh, filming my first two roles at the same time. I filmed Wait and uh, Forbidden at the same time, which are two characters that are indicative to each other. One was a South African uh, terrorist and the other one was a street guy. And then um, as far as my, my, my uh, filmography, I've been in so many films. Honestly, I just I just stopped counting and um, just put my head down and try to do the work. And then by the time I look up, I'll probably be somewhere close to where I want to be in this in this whole thing. So yes, you absolutely will be, y'all. I remember um, I was at the premiere of season two for McGraw Ave. Mm -hmm. I ran into you after the premiere with a whole attitude. Like, I had to check myself because I was like, oh, he going to think I'm serious. I had a whole attitude because you had pissed me off in McGraw ad. And I didn't think you could piss me off no more. And then he your ass come in, Scott. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. Mm, okay. And I really was going to try to, like, make sure I didn't, I didn't go full speed ahead into this Scott conversation, but it's so hard. All right. It's, All right. It's, it's so damn hard because, yo, you was tripping. Scott. Was tripping. How, how do you even prepare for a role like that? Um, I think we all have been a part of domestic violence or in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a family member who's experiencing it, um, neighbors, uh, and so I, just in general, when I'm taking on wrong, taking on roles, I try to draw from real life experiences, and that was one thing, and I, I guess I kind of let um, that crazy that we all really have in us, but we have to. Remind ourselves that it's a jail cell somewhere waiting for us. You know what I'm saying? And these jails ain't full. You know what I'm saying? They got a spot for your ass. So um, kind of let go. You know what I'm saying? Just let go. And when you let go, it allows uh, the truth to come through. You know what I'm saying? In, in terms of what this character is about. Uh and then the other thing is you don't judge the character. You know, this character, um, whether in real life or in movies, like the characters that, that play the crazy roles or psychos or in, even in this movie where he, um, where he raped, uh, these people, they don't think they're crazy. They think that um, society is to blame for their ills. And so they take it out on society. So that's kind of how I prepared for it. I didn't judge my character. I understood the the uh, the mission, and so hey, the rest is history. Mm hmm. So we talk about how you prepare for a role like that. How do you come out of a role like that? Of a role like that? It takes a couple of days. Uh, it's taxing on the, it's taxing on the spirit. So you give yourself a couple of days to uh, pretty much just relax and try to just forget about, you know what I'm saying, all the, the trauma that you caused. And if you can, try to find somebody that's in that position and try to help them out, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Well, um, I did mention at the beginning of the live that because I am a literacy advocate, I would be, you know, tossing in little different things to encourage people to be readers. Um, and I just want to remind you all that a lot of times when we are watching these movies, whether it's on Tubi or any of the other streaming networks, 
that they may have first started off as a book, right? Definitely. And so even some of the movies that Tristan has been in was first a book. And so I have a question that I want to pose to you all in the chat. And if you know the answer and the first person that tells me the correct answer, y'all going to win a prize. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a little something. So here's the question. What movie has Tristan played in that was based off of a novel? So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait and I'm going to see. Tristan, you, do you know the answer to this? Yeah, I know that. You do? Oh, okay. All right. All right. I so, think second, but yeah, I'm on seven. <laughs> All right. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to give y'all a little clue. Y'all got a couple of them that you can say. So I'm going to wait and see. But um, make sure that y'all, if you know it, y'all better come in here and let me know something. Y'all think on that. And I'm sure y'all probably about to go in here and be trying to research it and everything because y'all don't know off the top of your head. Now, somebody said he played me. And um, nope. I wasn't even in that. No, that wasn't. <laughs> That wasn't, that's, that's not it. Somebody else said BMF. No, actually, uh, uh not, not the novel. Nope, nope, nope. Somebody else said, wait, no, no, that's not it either. Oh, and we got somebody who did get it right. And the movie is Trust Nobody. Hey, I'm giving like a little snaps and all of that for the winner. All right then, Carmen Allen. She got it right. The movie is Trust Nobody. Um, the novel is Trust Nobody. It's by Stephen Love. So just want to kind of throw that little piece of trivia out there to you all. Carmen is a winner of a novel from one of our ICU reading and social network members. I am going to be gifting you the novel Dead to Me by Ebony Evans. So awesome. Also, if they would have said forbidden, they would have been wrong either because that was also based on a novel. Yeah. So y'all had some options. I had the first one. She came up and she said trust nobody. So, but we also know that forbidden is the book as well. So if y'all want to read either of those books, y'all make sure that y'all go and check them out because we always advocate for reading over here. Mm. <laughs> All right, you guys. So I'm heading back over to the chat. And if you have any questions that are, they can be specific to Tristan. Um, or if you have any questions that's specific to the movie, then go ahead and you can put that in the chat. But in the meantime, I got a question about our nephew, Lil Emery. Okay. Um, how are baby doing? Because at this point, he our nephew. He, how he, you doing? He is loving it. Um, he loved it. You know, <laughs> I know that it seemed like that was very harsh, but when we filmed it, it wasn't like how it was when y'all seen it. Um, and then this movies is just like playing pretend. They, my kids, running around the house pretending that they shooting each other all all the time. So it's just uh, pretend on a big on a big scale. Okay. Okay, so is he is he at a place where he going places and people recognize him? Um, not yet, but because he always in the car. <laughs> I make sense. <laughs> but most definitely, like um, I take him to the gym with me. They notice him from the gym, um, in the gym where I should say. Uh, but you know, not not too. They always ask about. They always ask me, "Is is that my son?" No. Okay. And then you you always got your got your sons in the midst of things like always. So it's a few different movies that you've had your sons in. You know what? This might be a good time for me to give another book away. What you think? Yeah, most definitely. Okay, so we already know that we have one of your sons in. If I can't, what's his name? Uh, or, sorry. That's it's fine. Ask. Yeah, no, no, a star, a star, a star. Okay, yeah. all right. So a star, but we know that you've had a couple of your sons, other sons, in some of the movies. So, 
the first person to tell me one of the movies that another son was in, you all are going to win a prize. So I'm waiting for this chat. I'm waiting for the chat. Anybody know the movies? Now, this is a little bit easier. It is. That's that one. This, this a little easier. Boom. Because we just talked about it. There it go, Geeked Up. Oh. We just talked about it. So, <laughs> Narc, the video footage that we saw was actually him and his son. So, you know, pulling crack out your, out your son's ass is a whole lot easier than pulling crack out of somebody else's ass. You know what I'm saying? I like his ass. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? It was, it was real easy for him, you know, for that but reason alone. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he took over my job and hopefully he was is wiping his ass. I hope so. I oh. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, geeks up. Uh, make sure if you don't mind, go ahead and put your email address down in the comment section. I actually forgot to mention that for Carmen as well. Put your um, email address in the comment section. That way, one of my admins can copy that down for me. One of my ICU admins copy that down so that we can get you a copy of Complicated Simplicity by Kaylin Hunt, who is another ICU Reading and Social Network member. So congratulations to you, Geeked Up. So um, we are going to head on back over to this chat. A lot of y'all were getting it right. Y'all just didn't get it in here quick enough. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, we got a really good question in here. Um, how about, has he written any of the scripts? Yes, um, I have a script that I just wrote, uh, well, I, I, I wrote it maybe about seven or eight years ago. Um, yeah, and um, it's called Have You Seen Me? And it's based on um, some kidnapping, I will say that. Mm, okay, we so we, you wrote it and... Tell me about what the process looks like after you write a script. Like, what does that look like for, for, for you? Uh, it is uh, like a weight is lifted off, off your shoulder because sometimes these characters um, live rent free in your head, and you have to get all of that stuff out of there. You have these voices talking to you. I know that sounds crazy, but you have these different characters' voices to uh, talking to you, and they keep you up at night. And you have to get all of that stuff out. And sometimes uh, my fingers type faster than my thoughts uh, permit me to. And it's just, it's, it's, it's actually a relief getting all of that out and just seeing it like come to not necessarily life per se, because you haven't filmed it yet, but you have a, a foundation of what um, a beautiful thing that people are going to enjoy is right in front of you. Mm. So in the, in the most definitely uh, weight off your shoulder once you complete it. I've heard plenty of authors say those same types of things before too. Tristan, you are author. I am. Wait, look at that. Oh, okay, I love it. <laughs> All right, so I have another question and comment here. Um, This one is from uh, one of the authors. And the president of ICU Reading and Social Network, Miss Ebony Evans. And she says, I can imagine you're recognized for your acting in the streets. And how does that feel? And then the second part of this question is, what has been your most memorable interaction with the fan thus far? Um, I can imagine. Okay, and how does it feel? Mm -hmm. it, um, it's surreal. Uh it feels good to make other people day, um, but more times than not, people really make it my day. Uh, I'm human too. I go through things, um, and it brings me back down to to earth. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff not that bad. You know, uh, it feels good. It really does feel good. I never get tired of it. I never turn the fan away. Um, and. It's, it's a beautiful feeling. I ain't gonna lie. It, it's like your heart. Sometimes acting could be a thankless job, and it really makes it worth it. Um, and what was my most memorable interaction? 
Uh, a lady smacked my hand the other day before she congratulated me. <laughs> I was <laughs> something to eat, and she recognized. She actually, they came. All the way, they came. They, I don't know where they came from, but it was two different cars, and they pretty much um, bum bushed, bum bum rushed the restaurant that I was in. Um, a guy who had he had one leg. He came and he said, "Man, I had to come in here and get this picture." And uh, the lady hit my, she hit my arm and she said, you was bad in that movie. And she gave me a hug and told me how much she enjoyed the movie afterwards. And we took some pictures, but that's probably the most, most memorable or most wild one thus far. Ain't nobody. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Um, another question is, what was your hardest scene to film? And if you can't. The rape scene was probably mm -hmm. the hardest scene to film because uh, that's not my nature at all. And you had to actually put yourself in a rapey mindset. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that probably was like the most hardest one because I never want to take something from a female. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. doing that and having to put myself in the mind frame of what would I be doing if I would? And that was like, nigga, you ain't gonna, you're not going to never rape nobody. So what? So it's so it's like I had to put myself in 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 those in that mind frame in order to uh, all the grunts and stuff that y'all hear is like I had to like figure out what what would that be like in in real life so y'all could be disgusted by it. And we were, we was real disgusted by it. Real yeah. disgusted by it. as as we were supposed to be. So. Well, you came in and did your job. Most definitely. Making love and raping are not the same thing. So we mm -mm. most definitely had to. Yeah. It don't matter what your kink is. It's different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. We've got another question to see. Um, Have you always been into the arts? No, I haven't. Um, Like I said, um, in 2016, once 50 Cent announced that he had the rights and he was actually doing the show, I hired me an actor. Well, before then, I was always a class clown. I was always uh, very congenial. Um, I had done like school plays and stuff like that, but not really necessarily into the arts. Okay, that's fair. So, I'm another point to that is just keep on living, and you never know where life might take you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I found something. It would took me. It took me 30 something years to figure out what I want to do when I grew up. You know what I'm saying? And I finally found out what I want to do. So there's no time limit on on, on uh, finding your career, finding your passion. Just once you find it, go for it. Right. Because um, I ain't going to tell y'all how old I am doing this. Who would have thunk it at my age? I ain't telling y'all my age. But I love Hair too. That mo your hair. Your, that's, that's, you're killing it right now. I can't even lie to you. <laughs> Say it one more time. <laughs> oh, you're doing it. You, you, you killed it with it. Oops, thank you. I, I don't, and I don't want to feel like you got your hair done just for me. Mm, indeed. <laughs> and I know why you're saying that. Y'all, listen. <laughs> why I didn't read to him yesterday and i can promise y'all i ain't look nothing like this and and that's is when it happened when the people bombarded the uh the restaurant we were sitting in that parking lot i think after i came out is when i seen you and so that was oh okay for that before i seen you that's when the people came and they was just going it was, it was, it's a beautiful experience but go ahead most definitely didn't look like that yesterday yeah he, oh you ain't have to agree like that though no 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 <laughs> you said that real quick you agreed real fast i'm just that hair was not that color. It was this color. What? It was. You just couldn't see it because it never man. It don't oh. matter. It don't matter. But yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody gonna be trying to hate on me because they gave me a compliment. And I mean, it is what it is. I'm cute. Boop. So <laughs> We are going back over to the chat. Let's see what else we got. Oh, okay, Carmen has a question here. And she says, 
how do you select the locations for the movie? So I don't know if it's necessarily you that makes that decision, but whomever does, how does that come about? Um, it's a combination of uh, of people. Um, we have a location, like a locations list when we first um, start pre-production and we see who can provide what location. You know, somebody might have somebody that have a barbershop or a house or a club or so it's pretty much um like connections or resources that we may already have uh a lot of times we may put out a post um what we should start doing is just putting out posts in general and have a list of businesses that uh don't mind us or don't mind soliciting their business for that purpose but that's pretty much how we do it. We, we pretty much just use our own uh, resources and see who knows what and work from there. That's what's up. Resourceful. I love it. And can I just say, just to kind of piggyback off of that question and why it's so important and how impactful the movie scene has been for the whole city, this is yet another avenue of income for somebody. You know what I mean? When you written out your spaces and things of that nature, you're being promoted in the movies and stuff like that. Um, I think sometimes we forget about how having this heavy presence in our city is helping our city. Like people are talking about Detroit on a very national scale now in ways that they weren't doing before. So I just I'm always going to advocate and give respect where it's due and you along with, you know, Mina and all the other people who are acting and directing and producing out of Detroit are doing the damn thing and y'all deserve y'all flowers. So shout out to y'all. And to piggyback up what you said too, is people actually moving moving to Detroit for that purpose alone, just to come and act and be a part of this this industry we got here. So man, we on the rise. Keep on supporting us, man. Keep on uh tooting our home for for us and championing for us because uh we turn this thing around. We're trying to make a name. We're trying to put Detroit back on the map. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got I got me some friends that stay out of state and they stay tuned in. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I I I, I seen some of the stuff y'all be seeing on the internet and in these groups. Y'all need to chill out. You know what I mean? Show a little bit more love, y'all. They they doing some things here, okay? This is a this is a little, you know, quick little personal question because I'm curious too. Who be braiding your hair? Keisha, Lakeisha. Um, I got a couple of different people that braid my hair. Sometimes I braid my own hair. I was just gonna say because that was gonna be what I thought that the answer was gonna be. Like he probably braid his own hair. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Mm -hmm. She want to braid some other people. What you say? Does she want to braid my hair? Lakeisha. <laughs> Yeah. He said you won't break his hair. So I bet I already know the answer to that question. She might not even know how to braid no hair. She could be like, yes. <laughs> okay, Lakeisha. So he asked you a question. So you got to respond, ma'am. So he needs to know. Might be able to put you on the rocks. But in the meantime, um, we have a question from Miss Erica Kane. So what made you audition for this role, uh, Scott? I didn't have to audition for this role. Looking at too. <laughs> 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 no, Mina called me up like I got this role for you. Um, I read the script and I immediately fell in love with it because of my good nature and the type of person I am. When I'm not Scott, people didn't believe that I could pull this off. Um, but once again. You know, I'm in. I'm, I was up for the challenge, you know, but I didn't have to necessarily audition for that role. Uh, she called me up like, "Hey, man, I got this role for you," and I read that script. And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I could do it for sure." That's what's up. So we got us a, a comment and a um, question here from Octavia, and she asked, um, or she said, "Black men are really starting to delve into their mental health." Scott seemed to have extreme bipolar and narcissistic personality tendencies. Did those characteristics ever make you second guess playing this role, knowing it was so triggering? No, it did. Um, like I said before, uh, you don't judge the character. 
you know, you don't look at their flaws. And um, what you do is you humanize, you try to humanize that person as much as possible. Um, because there are people out here like that world, even with Jeffrey Dahmer, I think we all felt, even though he did some horrible things, and I'm not comparing myself to Jeffrey Dahmer or Scott to Jeffrey Dahmer, but he, they kind of humanized them in that, in that uh, docu-series. So what you try to do is you just try to humanize that person and try to, even though he's fucked up, you try to make people feel sorry for Scott too. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody it comes into this world as fucked up as Scott is. Scott went through some shit that brought him to the point to where he was willing to carry out those heinous acts. You know what I'm saying? So you try to figure out what those nuances are in his life and you try to uh tell the truth you know a lot of a lot of times with these characters we try to make these characters perfect but their flaws and their imperfection is what makes them relatable to the audience mm-hmm yep man um we got another question here the good one so when having to tap into scott's crazy ass i added the ass um was there any parts you ad libbed? Yeah, um, a lot of the ad lib, uh, the turtle shit that y'all love ad lib. <laughs> you be my fucking shiro, always sleeping on me, Harlem. You know what I'm saying? All that shit was ad lib. The lowercase letters ad lib. You have a new dinner plan by tomorrow ad lib. Um, and that's my that's my that's my pet peeve. Um, I take the shit and I make it my own. And um, you all love it. We do. This lowercase situation. Uh, so I know that's an ad lib. Is it an ad lib that just came to your mind in this role? Or have you said that to somebody before? Somebody before. You said that to somebody before? Yeah. Who, who you say that to, Tristan? Uh, I said it to a girlfriend. I said it to uh, shit. Niggas in the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know they was mad as hell at you. Yeah. Oh, I know they was mad at you. Let's see. Uh, look, look, your girl, answer, answer the question. He said like, you want to break his ear. That's yes, no, girl. Let us know. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I think. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. I would think it would be towards the end with his son. And if I can't, because as a point of time. Okay, so I'm pretty sure what she's saying is yeah. that towards the end, that scene with your son, would be that, that was probably difficult to watch because the way that it was filmed, it seems like you guys maybe weren't immediately in front of each other playing that out the way that we saw it. But watching it like for the first time how how was that um because i knew what was it was it was coming up and i put and because i seen it screened it a couple of times before it actually came out it wasn't and then like i'm an actor you know what i'm saying so i know you know what i'm saying that it, it is it is what it is but it wasn't to me it wasn't that it wasn't that bad Okay. 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 And that probably segue. That final scene. Mm -hmm. um, well, me and my son, we rehearsed, you know what I'm saying? Uh so I can quit saying, you know what I'm saying? We rehearsed immensely because I wanted to make sure that when we got on set that it went fast. Um we wasn't costing the uh production a whole lot of money trying to get it right. So we we practice a lot on on set. And another thing that like the audience, we didn't get this shot, and I don't know why we didn't get this shot. The reason why you don't actually hear me talking when he's saying, You shut you shut up, you shut up, is because I was supposed to have been in front of the door saying, Shh, shh. And then mm. was saying, You shut up, you shut up. Oh, okay. Well, okay, behind the behind the scenes, little T. I got you. Um, oh, you know what? We kind of go back a little bit and you talked about your script that you were writing. Um, are we going to be filming that anytime soon? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, how soon? I would say maybe the fall. Maybe okay. October. Okay, that's awesome. It's always people asking about, you know, being in movies and doing auditions. So y'all know that at this point you should probably be on the lookout because he'll probably be making some announcements on his socials. So if you're interested, you guys. There you go. Come on, what a tough question is that, man? Come on, what a you you want some nasty questions. And not necessarily. Okay. okay, well listen, I got something for you. I want to play truth or dare. Okay, let's play truth or dare. So, um, I have a truth or dare. If you guys have a truth or dare suggestion, y'all go ahead and put it in the chat. But okay, so my truth or dare is you gotta pick one, right. and then we're gonna see which one. We're gonna see what you gotta do. You down? Mm -hmm. Okay, truth or dare. You pick. What you want me to do? No, I want, I want you to truth. pick. You can pick there. <laughs> there. Okay, there. Okay, so there is a scene from the movie, mm -hmm. If I Can't, where he is talking with Harlem, and there is an Anita Baker song playing in the background. I just want to be yours. Yeah. Would you like to sing the chorus for us on tonight? I just want to be your. <laughs> <laughs> want to be your. And it's supposed to be girl, but I ain't singing that part either. You, you know, better sing, Tristan. Somebody, huh? Then you better sing. I sang. I just sang. I know. You better. You did it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I Okay, don't you want to do the truth too, then? I mean, since we're here. Okay, so the truth is, of all of your many, or maybe not that many, intimate, romantic scenes, who was the best? Can I talk about stuff I haven't filmed yet? Um, yeah. Talk about what you want to. Uh, trust nobody three. Trust nobody three. Oh, it's a three. Okay, well that's T, cause you know the people might not have known that. Yeah. Um, I had a threesome. Oh, okay. And um, I had vagina in my face, and I had vagina on my lap. Oh. Goodness, I got me <laughs> against me, y'all. All right, we can keep what? it. I left there kind of hot and bothered. I, I left there, I left there, um, Nina uh -huh. back. Wait, okay, so you went out. I didn't quite hear what you said. You left her like, how, what? I, le I left, I left, the, I left, uh, set kind of, kind of aroused. I need to, I needed to go relieve, relieve myself. You did how you do that? Yeah. How did I do that? I, like I said, I had vagina in my. It was a threesome, so I had vagina in my face, and I had. And then you was hot and bothered. You left, and then you did. Oh, I, I had pause. I didn't. I just need. I didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I so. Okay, it's fine. Ah. Uh, but okay, uh, let's see. What you want me? I, went, I went home, I got on XNXX. Yes, that's what I was looking for. And I and I and I and I, and I pleasure myself. Oh, okay, there we go. I went to the threesome section. <laughs> I can't even get through these. Okay, yo, I knew it was coming because this is what they wanted. This is what they wanted to hear. They want to know what the end result was. Okay, because you know. We on this topic so uh you know when we see some of these things and i'm not even talking about just with you i'm talking about just in general um it be looking real real right and i know that y'all are like no nah, we, we need to do it but do some y'all be doing it sometimes it's some people that's fucking that's pretending to be fucking i mean that's pretending to be fucking and then went left set and now they fucking <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> yup, cause I think I think some of them groups be telling all y'all business. Oh yeah, for sure. All y'all business. I'm talking about. 
on set. Oh no, on, not on set. Hell no. Because it's for one, you it'd be kind of hard for you to do that unless I was probably under the cover or something like that. But um, nah, because you got people in the room, and on my sets, there's always a female in the room with the female while she's having um, while she's in in the scene, so she's comfortable. Okay, it'd be too many people in the room, but some yeah. folks be into that, so you know. Yeah, for sure. It is I, what it is. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't, but I ain't mad at y'all. You know, make it real. Sell the scene, goddammit. it. Mhm. Mm Sell the scene because I promise it was a scene, and if I can't, and I was like, I, I don't know. I just well, feel like the huh? beginning sex scene. Yep. That. Superb acting. Yeah. Big Emory was Big Emory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, oh. her brother was on set. So, you know, that's how well, he was somewhere in the vicinity. So that, that's how you know that. You know, so it's, it's, it'll be, it's kind of hard. So we, we, but we do a very, we try to do a very good job of making it seem like it's real. And did. Yeah, yeah, cause it was like a little shift he did, and I was like, "Oh, oh I seen that before." <laughs> Ooh, okay, yeah. Mm, let's keep this going. Okay, Lakeisha, she said she do want to braid your hair, just so you know. Yeah, she do want to braid it. Oh, I don't think she know how to braid though. Damn. She like, I'm gonna learn, <laughs> and I feel you, sis. Cause I mean, hey, I'm gonna learn today. Okay, um. I don't know how to braid hair, so that means she she don't know how to do hair. She don't do her own hair, so she gotta, gotta listen. We 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 not doing no judgment over here about braiding hair. That's what we're, that's what we're not gonna do, Tristan. I know you got all your little pretty hair and everything, and you learn how to do things, but we're not judging. All right, so you go you gonna leave Lakeisha alone. I only get to pick on Lakeisha. I'm sorry, Lakeisha. Okay, all right, all right. there we go. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Who came up with the noodle idea? Uh, Don Snipes, who was uh, kind of like assistant director, he and 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 Mina did not want to use the noodle. She like, why would I want to do that? Uh, mostly Don Snipes. Snipes, shout out to Snipes for that dog ass idea because they've been going noodles about that motherfucking noodle. Listen, noodles about the noodle. You understand me? Oh my goodness. I can't even look at the pool noodle the same. I literally was in the pool and I was just like looking at the noodle like what part of noodle in here? Like, this is ridiculous. Part of pool noodle to the pool. <sighs> Dang, that's gonna be a trigger for me, I'm thinking. Mm, okay. Let's see. What else do you guys want to know? Now, y'all, he said that we can ask him anything, and you know he already took it there. Stephanie, you gonna you might have to close your ears up or something, sis, because I know this might be a little difficult for you to hear. So, I mean, y'all can come on through. Y'all can come on through with y'all's questions. We already asked about this here. We can still ask about the movies. Um, Okay, hold on, because I be having stuff to say, and I be forgetting, and I got to say it before I forget it again. There is a scene in the movie, and I feel like Sis had another one of the great, like, takeaways. You had your lowercase and turtle comments, but another sister in the movie, and she was giving me life. And it was the scene where Sis showed up at that hair salon. And Lolo wasn't there to do her hair. Mm -hmm. And then she was the 10 o'clock. She had another girl there. And she was the 10 o'clock. And mama wanted her deposit. Okay. Where's my deposit? Where's my deposit? Like, listen. I ain't going to Probably you saying that one, too. With that, I think I came up with that one. If memory <laughs> starts correct, I think I came up with that. Or, the, or, or that's the typical one she said. That's, the, that's Detroit hairstylist. One of the two. But most mm. that, that shit was hilarious. It was hilarious while we was fucking filming it. I be saying it at work. Where's your deposit? Yeah, because oh look, I work in property management, so it's like you about to move in. Like, where's my deposit? Where's my deposit? Yeah, I'm pretty sure people think I'm nuts. You I'm say up deposit all day long, and I hope you in, in what order, depending on what order you said in, 
you know, a uh, booty booty hole, booty crack and deposit, <laughs> deposit crack. I mean, booty dope, booty dope, booty dope, deposit booty dope, deposit. <laughs> Where's my deposit? Okay, you know what? Uh, I think the people in the chat gonna probably be saying all of this stuff too. Like, where's my deposit? Anybody else been saying it, or was it just me? Anybody else? Oh wait, I'm gonna miss the whole stuff in here. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm I'm here. I come. Uh, <laughs> listen, Sharice says she ain't hear you sing. Can you sing again? I just wanna be your. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. He just staring at you, girl. Ain't that sweet? See, oh. he not, don't, you, don't he make you want to just want to go watch another one of his movies? I know he do. He got plenty of them to choose from. So, y'all make sure y'all do that. Or just go back and watch the movie again. You know what? I noticed too. It's two different versions of If I Can't, right? So, like the one that's on Amazon and the one that's on Tubi are a little different. A little different. Okay. Nothing substantial though? Mm, not really. That, uh, Emery, some of Emery's, like his backstory was kind of kind of cut. That I, yeah. Because I think my rewatches were all on Tubi until somebody made mention of it. And I, I knew I had the movie on Amazon, so I started watching it. And that was probably the one thing. Oh, no, it was two of them I noticed. It was Emery's backstory was kind of like revealed. Like, oh, yeah, somebody know what he was getting down into. And then it was another scene where Harlan was like, struggling after he you know died with that baby and he came back in her dreams like you're gonna need to get your shit together right. so though that but that's as far as i'm because by that point i had watched the movie on tubi about four times so you know but yeah it's a few different ones um uh oh, wait a minute. So look, look, this Lisa right here. Hey Lisa girl, she talking about some so he wanna get nasty. Let Lisa, he said that you can ask anything, and Tristan, I'm gonna tell you right now. Lisa got a group called In Between the Sheets. They be na they nasty. She didn't got booted off social media and stuff. Like I'm almost kind of scared when she about to come in here and ask. I'm gonna have to keep on scrolling and, and come on, Lisa. see what she come up with. Yeah, come on, Lisa, with your nasty ass. <laughs> I saved you said we love threesomes. Yeah, I bet I bet y'all do. Now I don't know nothing about that because I'm a virgin. So don't don't puff your, your smoke in like that. I said what I said. I would have uh did the crickets thing, but I ain't got no crickets. <laughs> okay, I got another dare. Okay, uh dare him. To do the rest of this interview shirtless. Oh. I mean, oh shit. Oh shit. Listen. Guys, I got ask, that's it. That's that's it. This all it's, it's a whole nother shirt. There we go. There we there we go. Boom. Can't put it back on no more. There it is. Ask and you shall receive. Y'all, what other actor is doing these things for you? Not nobody. Who who else is bringing this to the people? Not nobody. Tell tell the tales. Shameless plug. Y'all can go ahead and um follow me on all my socials: Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, because yes, I do usually talk about books, but it you know we. It moves like this. This is the kind of energy that you get with me. So if you like it, then like me. Okay? Okay? So, damn it, he sat back too. <laughs> he sat back so y'all can see his tattoos. This is too funny. Sorry, Stephanie. Sorry. Sorry, sis. Cover your eyes if you need to. Mm, let's see. Uh, we know he fine. Yeah, we know. Oh, we uh no, no, it was no real sex scenes. He said they weren't doing no real sex scenes. Um, uh, we got a question here. 
why do the ladies be riding and still be having their panties on? Um, I guess you can pull them to the side. That's like, you know. Cause I was gonna say like it's it's almost like a little something about that. Like just pull the pants to the side. It's almost like a little nasty R and B ish vibe yeah. to it when you had to do it that way. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, mm, but that's just me. And if you ain't, you know what I'm saying, wet enough, it might leave the guy a little sh chafe or whatever, but. Oh, just... so basically shave. That's your preference. No, 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 no. I'm talking about shave, like, like too much friction and ain't enough lubrication. Oh, okay. Yeah. But since I asked, do you prefer it shaved. to be? Shaved or, um. I don't want a fur burger. <laughs> you know, so I look, but a little hair is cool. No hair is all right. <sighs> what they say, though, you know what they say? What? What they say? They say a shave, a shave pussy is a busy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's what, that's that's what the niggas say. Cause I, cause I mean, cause men don't always come and say what they be saying to their homeboys. To their women and stuff. So this is what they be saying. Yeah. I mean, because you know the hair, the hair. She ain't, she ain't doing no maintenance down there. It's because she ain't giving it to nobody. You know what I'm saying? But the person that's main trying to maintenance all that. I mean, it's it's exceptions to the rule. But nine times out of ten, or more times than not, I'm not gonna say nine times out of ten, but more times than not, it's because she putting that motherfucker to use. Yeah, we sure. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Somebody went back to it. Yeah, now they ain't left the set. Now they fucking yeah, yeah. They be doing it. Um, dang y'all. Okay, let me hurry up because I'm trying to get through these and I can see that I'm nowhere near the bottom. Um, we can go over if we got to. I don't know if the the, the app will allow you to, but I ain't tripping. Yep, it sure will. Oh, bet we got time. So y'all still can add your friends in here. Uh his shirt is off now, so y'all might as well go on here, share the live so the people can see. You know what I mean? Add your friends on in here, tag them, bring them on over. Cause I know they got questions. You even forgot to tell them. I told y'all at the beginning to do that. Um uh, uh, this is a nice soft question. Now, now that she didn't ask you to take your clothes off, basically, now she want to come with this little sweet PG damn question. Talking about some, how long have you been growing your hair, Tristan? Uh, for about 19 years. 19? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Let's see what else we got. Um, Wait a minute. Oh, y'all know what I wanted to do? I want to have a segment where we talk to you like you're Scott, and you got to respond as Scott. What you, you with it? Yeah. Okay, bet. All right, y'all. So get y'all Scott questions ready. All right, we're not talking to Tristan no more. Okay, we ain't gonna ask him about his hair and nope. We talking to Scott, so. Y'all can y'all can talk to him in lowercase or you can talk to him in uppercase. It depends on how you feeling. If you feeling froggy, then y'all can go ahead and jump. Uh let's see. Oh shoot, ask my question. Oh shoot, can you I, I missed the question. Child, you gotta ask it again. Put it in here again for me. Um uh oh, somebody said they definitely come to find Scott in Detroit. Here I come. <laughs> Listen, they coming from wherever. I don't know where Miss Hendrix is at, but sis said she coming. Okay, you about to bring them out. Um, do, 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 do. um okay, I'm gonna ask a couple more of these questions to Tristan only because I ain't make it all the way through to all of the questions, but I'm sure by the time I get to the end, we're gonna have the Scott questions. Okay, so boom. Was it difficult playing such a despicable character? No. What? No. No, that's not. It's not like I told I said before. It's like these are the type of roles that you want to play. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. 
I don't want to play the perfect person or I want to play somebody that um that I wouldn't be on an ordin on a, on an ordinary you know what I'm saying basis. So it was it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard for me. Okay. Speaking of hard, we have another question. Can he stand up for us? We're trying to see something. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like a piece of meat. I know, right? Oh, shame on y'all. But you did it because you're so nice to us. Thank you, Tristan. And you had no great sweatpants, nigga. Oh, nigga, you came ready, huh? Really? Okay. All right. All right. Good question. <laughs> Very good question and request. That's a good dare. Very good dare. Um, Let's see. Um, <laughs> as she said, for real, her daughter need a step daddy. <laughs> y'all is y'all funny. Sharice says she's sleeping good tonight. Thank you. Yup. Yup. I'm sure it's a lot of people that is going to um have some sweet dreams on this evening. Brought to you by I see you reading it's such a network and tell telling tales. Make sure that you follow both those platforms. Um let me see. You ever had a woman wrap your braids around each hand and ride that dick like a stick? <laughs> no, um, <sighs> not and ride it like a stallion, but eating it like some watermelon. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I gave y'all disclaimer that we was gonna have spoilers about the movie. I probably need to give y'all a disclaimer that this conversation could get real freaky because at this point we here. Okay, so ah, uh, yeah. Uh wait a minute, ask him who taught him to say the word bitch. <laughs> do we, does somebody teach you how to say that or do it just come organically and naturally? I think the word come just come. Organically and naturally. Mm -hmm. You know what? I got. She said this. Okay. Um. About I love the um the guy who had the AIDS too. Somebody was mentioning to me that he is um he he is somebody to know. I'm I'm kind of tapped out um on some people, but uh, he, he's real popular in the um I guess makeup world, the beauty world. Okay. Okay, because I um somebody else had like texted me. They was like, "Oh my God, that's so amazing!" They had him in a movie. Like that's so dope. I was like, "Oh, yep, yeah." I just I didn't know who he was, so I'm gonna have to look him up. Make sure I uh make sure I know his name and everything. Cause he yeah he was doing a hell out of some makeup. Um, show freak level. Uh, okay, what's your freak level? So I wonder how would you ask at answer a question like that like maybe on a scale of one to ten okay yeah let's do it like that on a scale of one to ten what would you say your freak level is i would say a nine because i ain't doing no ass play on my end. um freaky niggas that that freaky guy who enjoy ass play whether it's a tongue in their ass or a finger in their ass and i ain't with none of that okay all right, that's fine. Do I don't even know if I should go back. Uh oh, wait a minute. Here go another dare. Oh shoot. Okay. She dare you to take your braids out and shake your hair loose. Wow. They listen, you open this door. I was gonna keep it cute and sweet. She gonna have to um send me a cash out get my damn hair braid. <laughs> Listen. Okay, so uh, he 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 might not. Oh, wait a minute! And it's an unravel happening. It's yeah. almost it's giving all these fans tease a little bit too, because he's doing it real slow. I feel like I need to cover my eyes. Oh my god! I'm y'all watching. Oh. I feel like Stephanie a little bit. Like oh my god! Oh oh my. I pretty ain't probably not going on too many more interviews. <laughs> uh -uh, I can't be bothered with these bitches. They be asking and doing too much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The book nerds be the ones. I'm just saying. That's what I heard. 
somebody had told me that Ugh, but I, I don't know all right um oh we got a we got a movie question okay. i mean you can answer the movie question while you continue to unbraid your hair that's yeah. fine okay so who was that that killed harlem's husband who was it um uh, what's his real name or okay i'll give you uh his real his name is dom Avando. um He's an actor here from Detroit, Michigan. But who who was he in the story? Just a pawn that I used. To, he was a, a means to my end. Okay. Now, when you say means to the end, so you for sure set it up for Emery to be killed. I mean, it wasn't necessarily written in the script. Right, but insinuated. Yeah, but most definitely, I mean, it would have to be that way uh because you know when i explain it when i'm explaining to lolo lolo what was going on or why he got killed i'm letting you know that hey man me and him hustled together his ass thought he was too smart and you know that's when his ass got killed and another thing is um how else would i have known because she didn't tell me she didn't give me the description if she would have gave me a description of what he looked like i probably would it probably would have she probably would have thought it was me. A guy with long hair, light skin, you know what I'm saying? So she never, she never told me that. Yeah, but you know what? How I kind of read into that? I remember him asking her, you better you better shake it. Lisa. And he did it. Listen. Okay. We're trying to talk about this damn movie. And here you go, shaking all this. <sighs> all right. So, back to Right, Hold on, I forgot. I damn forgot my question. Uh, shit, now man, let me gonna go on back to the to the chat. You know what was it for me to watch when I watched the movie? Yeah, tell me. Mm -hmm. What was uh when when Emery did little Emery did get killed, and I was walking towards her, and I was getting ready to kill her. I just I had a moment of empathy for her, and I thought about my own kids and in that situation. Just imagine seeing your child get shot and you can't go and do anything for your child to, you know, uh, save his life. And you damn near, you just helpless to the situation, to the, to the whole situation. And that said that watching that, it was like, damn, that was a fucked up situation. That was pretty, that was pretty fucked up to, to see. It was, um, extremely difficult and it was actually something that i was getting text messages about like how we how does this happen and i was like y'all know this a movie right. <laughs> right so but yeah that was um that was crazy uh-oh say oh my god tristan you did this and and we keep bouncing between personal and movie and this this is crazy but um shave it all do you shave yeah okay i don't know i'm not completely uh completely because they say you know a, a shave dick is a busy dick <laughs> hey you know i would have to agree <laughs> but most it's 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 very it's very close cut <sighs> oh my goodness oh, i ain't never go back into the end of this oh Listen, you about to have people moving to the D. Okay. Listen. Our occupancy about to go up in the city. Folks about to move to Detroit. Messing around with you. Come on. Oh. That tax yeah. revenue. <laughs> okay, I think I done made it. I almost to the end. Okay. All right, bet. So oh, somebody asked how tall are you? That's a pretty that's a safe one. Six foot. Six foot. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh oh, wait a minute. Y'all got to um y'all gotta do a autocorrect or something on some of these. I can't pull these up. I don't know what you're saying. Um <laughs> it's a it's a request to hear from from Queen. I can't I can't do this, y'all. <laughs> like I think my mama watching. I can't I can't do all of these requests. Oh my goodness. Tracy Carter, please come in here and, and say and say something nice. Uh 
would you like to do more serious mainstream movies or stick to the mostly Detroit made movies? Um, mainstream movies. Um, I have fun with the Detroit movies, uh, and I still will continue to do them. Um, it would have to be kind of like scripts that's along the if I can't. Um, kind of bored with the drug dealer, everybody cheating, and you know I know that's what everybody loves, but it would have to be something that it could be, it could be all of that, but it would have to transcend what we have already seen already. Yeah, I agree. Um, you have done justice to all the roles that you've been in thus far, and so I'm pretty sure that most people are um hoping that whatever their desire is that you get it you know what i mean because you've been putting in your work you are you are very very good so we are hoping and wishing for all of the mainstream to come your way because you got a project for bc right that's, that's gonna be coming out soon tell us about that um well it's a full circle moment uh i didn't get a chance to play big on the BMF Star Series, but I am playing him on the biopic of the uh, first lady of BMF, the Tonisa Welsh story. Hey! ET Plus slated to be in October, and I'm really excited about it. I'm really, I'm really excited about y'all seeing the story and comparing and contrasting. And I cannot wait for y'all to uh, the memes from that and from comparing it to the BMF series. I look forward to y'all saying, "Hey man, what, what the fuck is wrong with Fifty Cent? Why he didn't get you?" I look forward to all of that because I know, I know it's, on, I know it's on the way. All right, it is. Like at this point, there's just really nothing else to do, nowhere else to go but up for you. So I see that coming. Um, let's see. Let me, let me get, let me get through here. <laughs> they talking about going to put that cash app up. I got you. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we, y'all, y'all, y'all just really not gonna be nice. Okay. Oh, Lisa said she'll braid your hair back up for you if you want. Okay. Okay. I think Lisa can braid hair too. Yep, I'm pretty sure she could. Uh, she could braid some hair. Oh, I think Lisa want to pull some hair, but go ahead, keep going. I'm trying to tell you, don't play, don't play with her. <laughs> But I'll, I'll be you asking for the smoke, but I'm just saying. Um, let's see how old. Oh, we can ask this question How old were you in turn the other cheek? And what's your sign? Ah, uh, that wasn't me. And uh, turn the other cheek. that was, <laughs> say, and I'm a Gemini. That was who in the movie? Dom Avando, the guy who killed the daddy, and um, if I, uh, yeah, Emory and if yeah. I. Uh huh, and you know what's so funny? I had somebody else I was talking to about the movie, and it was like it was the same dude. And I said, No, it wasn't. And I put up a post, and I was like, Y'all, we need to be blaming him too because that's who shot Emery, right? And y'all, y'all do look similar, but not really, right? I've been noticing the difference, and he he be out here grinding too. I wonder, do people be thinking that clearly they do, they think it's y'all the same person, but. That's also uh, one of the killers in uh, McGraw Ave. Mm -hmm. The shooter. Oh, yeah, yeah uh-huh. So, shout out to him. He he be in a whole lot of stuff, too. Shout out Just to like Don. You. Yeah, shout out to Don. He got some pretty hair, too, y'all. I don't know if I'd be able to get him to come and, you know, unbraid it and, and, and do all of this and take his shirt off and stuff. I don't know if we could do that with Don, but clearly... We can do that with Mr. Tristan. All right. Okay. So are y'all ready to talk to Scott? Hold on. Let me let me let me figure this out. Let me get let me get down. I'm about to miss some stuff. I already know. I'm I, I gotta bypass some of y'all because I already see all the thirst trappy stuff. Oh, let's see. Um I'm getting I'm getting down to it. Where y'all where y'all at? What y'all about to say to Scott? Okay, well then, I guess I'm going to have to go. Um, Scott, 
so how the hell did you get rid of that other bitch? Like sunglasses chick. Like how did that end? Like wh how you just leave her like that? Why you out of my motherfucking business, huh? Cause I was just asking. I, I was using low case letters. Just you sure? You sure you want to ask me that? Is that you sure you want to ask me that? Come on, ask me again. Let me let me hear you ask me again. <laughs> uh, huh? What's the fuck? I, next question. Okay. All right. Um, y'all. Somebody else got another question. I ain't got no another question. I don't have no another question. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I really don't. I just, I, I really didn't just. <laughs> you had to say that to me like that. <laughs> you did it. Okay. Shoot. I got a, I got a granddaddy. He, he wouldn't allow this like that. These niggas be here like, I'm scared. Exactly. Like you. <sighs> oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready for Scott. Okay. We got another one. Why the hell you pop Harlem in her mouth like that, nigga? Oh, I added that. Yeah, yeah. Like she was a kid. Because she was because she was completely out of pocket. Now, she, she didn't ask me like a Scott question. She asked me a question like, because she was out of pocket. You know, she, you know. <laughs> when you were a narcissist and somebody not taking you I'm not taking you serious. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if you have any other tools in your bag outside of violence, then that's what you that's what you resort to. Mm. Okay. Let me see. I got another question and uh Scott, so um who hurt you? Why is you like this? Yeah, nigga. You don't like what you see, baby? Huh? I don't like how you be doing my girl Harlem. You don't like how I do Harlem? No. I don't give a fuck about what you think. I give a fuck about what you think with a mule give a fuck about his birthday. You hear me? Do you understand? Yeah, I hear you. I do. Yeah, I heard that. So I mean, um, next question. Why you sleep with Harlem's cousin? Look. What me and Harlem got going on something special. <laughs> we love each other when we were together. When we apart, we apart, baby. Hmm. Another question. You hungry? You want something to eat? Yeah. Take your ass upstairs and spread your legs. Jerica, he's talking to you. <laughs> he's talking to you, Jerica. He's talking to you. Okay, listen. I thought that this was gonna be a good idea. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna ever do it. I sure can't. Uh, yeah, we about to have to ask. We might have to ask you uh, some other type of questions because no, I can't. No, nope. you're not going to sit there with that hair, with no shirt on, and talk to me like that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to let you do it. Nope. I. I next question. Uh. Hmm. Oh wait a minute. Let me see. About them. Oh, Scott. When you taking me to get some of them lamb chops? Baby girl, you don't see the motherfucking fresh, fresh press up. You don't see them fresh pack. Ah. Baby girl, you don't see them fresh pack of Franks in that motherfucking hot, uh, refrigerator. Huh? You, yeah, you better take the motherfuckers out, boil you some water, put your pork and beans in there. You don't get motherfucking lamb chops from my new business. Oh, wait a minute. First of all, that triggered me because what you're not going to do is give me hot dogs. Okay. That's just don't. Okay. Wait. And cut. 
uh-uh, no, you ain't giving me no damn hot dogs. And you definitely ain't going to boil them. The least you could do is put them on the grill so they have some little black on them. I know you playing. Because, listen, this is Tamara responding to Scott. Now, uh-uh, you're, you're going to grill my hot dogs, okay, and my lamb chops. Do you understand what I'm saying? Damn. In uppercase letters. Shit. She ain't fucking around with damn Scott. Don't fuck with me. I didn't have too much to drink. I, okay, I'm sorry. <sighs> uh, oh, okay. Oh, y'all is y'all is crazy. Y'all is crazy. That's right. I'm gonna tell them. Shoot, somebody was talking about me. So <laughs> Scott was. Scott definitely was the community. Uh, the community people. But so was that cousin. So was the cousin. Uh-uh, let's see. What else we got? Why? Okay, yeah, we asked him why he's so hang angry and do he need a hug. Y'all, I should I wish it was some way I could have let y'all do this because I'm not about to I'm not about to be able to do that. Cause it's too difficult for him to come back and then be saying all that type of crazy stuff to me. Who you talking to? Who you talking to? Okay, let me see. Um was in Oh, okay. Yes, can you? I think this is probably the question that I missed forever ago. <laughs> um, you were in one of Kenya's fashion shows years ago, and have you done any runway shows lately? Um, I haven't done none in a while. I think I did a a, a virtual fashion show back when COVID um, was going on, but outside of that, I haven't done none. Cause you say you was booked and busy with these movies. Yeah. Uh, well. And writing. Yeah. But you haven't been reading anything. <laughs> you haven't been reading anything. But you know what? Okay, y'all, we about to we about to flip it because I I told y'all I'm gonna come I'm come back to a book every time. I'm coming back to a book. So you told me about a book mm -hmm. that you read, and I can't remember if you said it was your favorite book. But you told me the, the first time we talked about a book that you had read. And do you remember what it was? It was either probably The Four Agreements or uh, The Way of the Superior Man. It was that one. The Way of the Superior Man, yeah. It was that one. Um, is that your favorite? Or are those your two favorite books? It's up there. Um, those are probably my top books. Okay, so... The Way of the Superior Man, The Four Agreements, uh, Think and Grow uh, Rich, uh, uh, and The 48 Laws of Power. Okay. And those are all like self-help books and stuff like that, but that's like what I'm into. I, I love uh, self-mastery. Working on myself and being the muse and the sculptor is like uh, something I hang my hat on. Okay. So, I always say this, right? When it comes to books that men read, it's always like self-help. They always want to become a better person after they done read. Women tend to read for entertainment purposes. Like, we don't, we don't need to be fulfilled in any type of way after we read a book. Sometimes it's, it's we do, but... We are the ones who definitely are going to take a fiction novel and be like, listen, I want to delve in. I want to read about somebody crazy as hell. Um, you know, y'all want y'all, y'all want to stimulate your emotions. You know what I'm saying? We want to, our logic, you know what I'm saying? Um, that, that's that's another one of those things in, in the book, uh, The Way of Superior Man, it tells it, it, it tells uh, us how women grow from compliments. Like, you're so beautiful, you're this, you're that. Whereas, man, we grow from challenges. I bet you can't do this. I bet you can't do that. Or just, you know, just life general challenges, you know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. I did read that book, by the way, and I thought it was um, very interesting. Clearly, the target audience is men, but um, I enjoy reading it. It was it was pretty good, and he was pretty he was pretty spot on with how how you talk how men talk to women, mm -hmm. um, and how they can get how they 
can actually get more from us when they talk to us right. Like at the end of the day, it's it's a certain type of game that you have to play. You got to play into our emotions because we're emotional beings. If you decide that you want to say something like you would say it to your homeboy versus saying to us and, you know, speaking to our feminine wiles, you're not going to get the same results. Somebody, another dude can be saying the same thing, but if he said it the right way, he gonna get it and you ain't. That's right. So, yeah, I, I did enjoy uh, reading that book. Um, Let's see. I'm about to hit the chat. Ask him, do he, wait, put his hands on females. He don't. Hey, he let don't me, put his hands let me, on, on females. Let me go ahead and take the floor now. If I did, if I was that type of guy in any way, shape, or form, as big as the internet is and as crazy as that movie is going in right now, somebody will be happy to put me on blast. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I ain't that guy. I believe you. Yeah. I definitely believe you. Um, we have a another uh question. Let's see. Out of all of the characters you played, what's your favorite and least favorite character? And which one can you most relate to? Um, I would say right now, it probably would be, it probably would be Scott. Um, my, as my favorite, uh, my least favorite. Mm-hmm. I- it's a movie. Uh, it's, it's, it's a movie that um, hasn't haven't came out with uh, yet. Um, it's a movie where, and I couldn't even. And it was my least favorite role. Moment of transparencies because it wasn't like it wasn't no actors like real actors in the movie, and they wasn't giving me nothing. So it was hard for me to really uh, perform. Okay. Uh, favorite. Aww. And uh, which, which character do I relate to the most? Uh, I don't know. Because I don't play some. Probably Zeke from McGraw Ave. And that's the one you pissed me off in. Yeah. I guess. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have another question. Uh, will there be a part two? Um, so if I can't. Mm-hmm. I don't um I did I don't see how it could be a part two because everybody damn dead. But yeah. I do know, it could be it's a way that it could be a part two, but it would have to be someone and I and I I don't want to give the idea away. Right. But it, it would have to be somebody that that was just as as, as uh, crazy as Scott. Yeah, because um, yeah, Scott was crazy, and I'm gonna tell you what. Um, I told y'all about author Octavia Grant, who is one of the, the reasons why we were able to come together today, because she she requested this, okay? And she's an amazing author. She writes the same kind of crazy ass niggas, okay? And so I want to give away a copy of her book, Unhealthy Love. The title pretty much says it all. This book was the reason that we had to call her to task and do like an interview of her about this book. She was like, well, if I had to do it, then he should have to do it because that role was crazy. You guys, I want to give a copy of that book away. So first person to have their email address down in the comment section, I will make sure that you get a copy of Unhealthy Love by Octavia Grant, you guys. So go ahead and get it in there. My admins are watching. They looking. So get it in there so we can um, get you your stuff. And then I have another question on here. When you're not acting, what do you do to relax and to have fun? And can you dance? Um. Okay, so when I'm not acting, what do I do to relax? I like to go. I love the gym. I love going to the sun in the gym, so I love working out. Um, I like to smoke. I'm, I smoke weed, so I smoke weed to relax. And um, I can dance. I mean, I ain't so uh, I can't 
I don't know. I can dance though. I got rhythm. You know where I'm about to do, right? Try to make me dance. I mean, since you brought it up, <laughs> you said you could. I mean, what am I gonna dance to now? What are we gonna dance to? Okay, uh, we gotta we gotta think of a song, y'all. I don't I don't know. Dang, but you but you gotta think of the song in your head and then just dance to it. I danced already. I danced to uh. When I was singing, um, I just want to be yours. Okay, no, you didn't like dancing. You didn't stand up and dance, right? So you right. Oh, just just sing your dance then. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -mm. We're not gonna do that. I'm not gonna make you do that. No dancing. Um, let's see. Uh, uh but I do want to just say, clearly he is not a Scott, y'all. Tristan is a pretty nice, cool, sweet respectable guy with long hair and nice body. <clears throat> so, uh, we have another question, I think. Oh, this is a suggestion on <laughs> part two. Had the daughter grow up and have Scott come back and see her get with a man like her daddy. Um, I'm going to say this. Everything don't have to have a part two. You know, it don't, it, don't, it don't have to. It don't have to. I, I think that the movie is a great standalone, personally. Um, I mean, if, if something could come about, then I mean, bet. But Sam, I, I, sh I share with you my idea when we get off of here with what I think the part two could okay. be. You know, little feedback, a little bit I do have in my mind. Okay, listen, I just feel like I need to say this to you all. I really am going to have to ask y'all nicely. Like, don't be hitting me up in my DMs trying to ask me what he told me and stuff like that. Don't be saying no hateful stuff to me because he told me how cute my hair was and stuff like that. Okay, like, favor ain't fair. <laughs> all right, it's just, it's just not. And I know that y'all kind of wish that he would give y'all compliments on y'all hair and stuff too. But I mean, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> okay um we got some emails in here thank you guys so again we have our admins they are checking to make sure that the first person that was able to get their email in there we are going to make sure you get your copy of the book i'm so glad though that you guys are interested and this is what i'm gonna do they about to be mad at me because I'm going to be like, <laughs> can you do some more work? Can we just take down the email addresses? And I mean, I feel like we're going to be able to get some stuff out to some of our other um, other um, readers who would like some books. So if we can come up with, you know, a few little extra copies that we can see if we can do something for y'all. Because we, again, we love to advocate for reading over at ICU Reading Social Network, as well as me, Tam Telling Tales. Make sure that you follow us, you guys, um, and review. Please review books uh, and review movies. That leads into a question that I actually have. I know that when we go on streaming networks and stuff like that, we can see the numbers, they rate them and things like that. Can people actually go somewhere specific and rate movies or give reviews? Um, I'm pretty sure. I think it's you can on Amazon. Um, I'm really not sure about Tubi. I don't think they they offer that. Okay. Because, I, yeah, I think Amazon does. But, yeah, I, review. Review, y'all. Review. Um, oh, we got another question. So, for Scott. This is a question for Scott. <clears throat> what really happened to your mama? Because Harlem mama said that lady wasn't your real mama. Um, that lady was like a, a surrogate mother. Um, somebody who helped raise me. But Scott's mother was uh, a prostitute who was cross-addicted to crack cocaine and heroin. Um, Scott was forced to watch his mother trick and perform all type of sex acts and stuff like that and um was left in drug houses and things like that and she ultimately died of an overdose and so that's when he got with his surrogate mother mm. so, come on backstory well y'all heard it that was it and all that was created by myself nobody told me that but you have to 
we all come from somewhere. It's like I told y'all before, when you see even people in real life who are deranged, but specifically in movies, when they um when they're playing these characters, it's something that happened in their life, their previous circumstances that brought them to where they at today. And they think they're justified in doing whatever heinous act they're doing because society has uh, dealt them a bold hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got us another question from Ebony. Um, do you do you work out with your hair down or braided? I work out with it braided. Oh, okay. Um, and I see you post a lot. Um, you be working out and it'd be like a whole little crew of dudes that be up in there working out. Most definitely. Come, so, come. you not, are you a trainer? No, I'm not a trainer. Uh, my, my, uh, my friend is B Primal Fitness on Instagram. Um, he kick our ass every morning, but he does everything that we do right alongside of us. Uh, y'all more than welcome to join if you in the, um, if you in the area. Uh, so I think he charges like ten dollars a day for each session, and that's because you work in the group. But he also provides uh, personal sessions and stuff like that. So, okay, okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Who whose idea was it to put the Anita Baker song in the movie, and how does how does putting music in a movie work? Um. I was that was on Mina's end. Um, she chose that song, and you have to, in order to put uh, somebody else's work in your movie, you have to get it cleared by the publisher, the person who uh, wrote the song, and the person who performed the song, and you have to get it, or, or the person who just owned the song outright. But if you if, if it's split up in pieces, then everybody has to uh, be in agreement and. Um, clear the record for you and it doesn't matter how long or the length or the amount of time that you play it you have to get that record clear or they can sue you so it's a myth that they say you can only play if you play it for 17 seconds then it's okay no no length of time is uh is acceptable if you don't have to clear it got you let's see um doo -doo 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 -doo. we grinding on down um oh how many um how many sons do you have? And have oh, someone asked. Someone asked if you have um, how many sons do you have, and how many of them have you acted with? Um, I have three, and I've acted with all three of them. Oh, okay, okay, that's so cool. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and. <laughs> you know what um so a lot of you i think may have ended up coming in a little bit later on in here because we actually been on the live for like an hour and 40 minutes so just to kind of recap a few things because some of the questions we did tackle already um how long he's been acting so for you say like 2016 did you say 2016 yeah Okay, yep, 2016, so he's been at it for a few years. We've got a lot of um, of compliments in here, of course, for you. And <laughs> Dolores Davis, she says, um, you made my birthday when you responded to my questions. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> so happy birthday, Dolores. Happy birthday. So um, it is getting a little bit later on in the evening. And before we go, I know that you and Mina are going to be um, taking taking tours or yep. bookings and all that good stuff. Most definitely. So if you know a promoter in Detroit or elsewhere and y'all want to uh, get us to come, to your city, please tag y'all promoter, or if you're a promoter yourself, let's let's do some business. Awesome. So before we go, everybody make sure that you are following Tristan on all his socials. You want to tell everybody what those are? On Instagram is N as a natural, N B L for number four life. 
And on Facebook, it's my first and last name. And the same thing for Twitter, my first and last name. Awesome. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all that you can find me on my socials, Instagram, Tam Telling Tales, Facebook, Tam Telling Tales, YouTube, Tam Telling Tales. And you can also see me over on the ICU reading and social network page. You guys make sure that you follow that page and then also join our group. It's a few thousand of us over there and we be clowning. Okay. So y'all come on over there. Y'all be our friend. We're going to be emailing y'all out some books. I can't say everybody because as I kept scrolling, y'all, a whole lot of y'all put some emails in there. I can't, I can't promise y'all, but we're going to do our absolute best. Um, Tristan, thank you so much for coming and talking to us tonight. I appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you everybody who watched. I appreciate y'all for having me. All right. So I'm going to log off and you all have a good night. But me and Tristan about to talk about this movie. Okay. Bye. How do you, you still on here?